The Indian military has been in a state of churn like the country at many different levels, other than the most obvious transformations of the armed forces into future ready combat arms. There's a great deal of churn and flux internally too in the connective tissue of the forces, the laws that govern them and how they operate in a new India. Our guest today, a former Judge Advocate General of the Indian Army and currently Executive Vice President of the Indian Society of International Law, is one of the most respected and well-regarded voices on the subject and the fascinating intersection of legal and military issues both within India and across the rest of the world. He's the author of several most respected books on military law, Major General Nilendra Kumar. Welcome, sir, and thank you so much, first of all, for speaking to India today on an issue that uh, deserves far greater attention, in our view, than it perhaps gets. And you've been someone who's devoted your entire life to this in the army and post your retirement. So there's a great deal of subject matter to cover. I'd like to start with some of the most visible aspects uh, concerning the Indian military and things that you've been writing about and speaking about. I'd like to start, uh, General Kumar, with the issue of the Agnivir scheme. Uh, and and the outside, much has been said about it. Yes. And I want to know what your view is. Uh, thanks, Shiv. To start with, now you have raised a very pertinent issue relating to Agnivir, because that is the soldiers uh, at the in induction and cutting edge, uh, cutting edge level. Now, there are certain very obvious flaws with this uh, system. The basic is that a soldier, when he comes, when he is selected, it's a matter of pride for him. Mm. And it gives him an enormous satisfaction and confidence that for the tenure of his service, he would serve with loyalty, discipline, and earn respect. Now, this thing would uh, stand challenged yeah. in the Agnivir, uh, firstly because the tenure is restricted. Mm. So, therefore, uh, it injects an element of uncertainty. What's going to happen? Yeah. He doesn't know. His confidence level is impacted and he also becomes nervous mm. and confused. Now, supposing I'm the commanding officer yeah. and I get to receive the Agnivir, the difficulty is that in the erstwhile scheme, which was followed for decades and centuries, all the soldiers, combatants, uh, they went through the basic soldiering, yes. followed by their trade work. To illustrate in artillery, uh, after the Initial training, hmm, hmm. a person would uh, get training as a gunner or as an operator or as a driver right. or as a surveyor, whatever, and likewise in Ahmed Corps, mechanized infantry as well. Now, what's happening in the new scheme that's connected to Agnivir is that there is initial training hmm. for six months at the regimental center yeah. and then he comes at the unit. Unit may be in a peace station, it may be in a field, it may be in a hard field, it may even be in the glacier, etc. Right. It is expected that the trade work would be taught to him there. Mm. Now, this suffers from certain inherent problems. Right. To illustrate, uh, the unit does not have that trained and experienced instructors to train that. They do not have time because everyone in the unit is assigned his primary job. There are no trainers or teachers for that. Yes. They do not have equipment. And this Agnivir himself hmm. would be part of, a, say, an artillery of a battery or a troop or a gun detachment. Right. So he has to work there. So with the result that he comes to a unit when he is not fit hmm. or hmm. he is unfit or a misfit in that setup. Uh, apart from that, it... Uh, brings in an element, I spoke about uncertainty, all this while for next four years, he is worried as to what's going to be his future. Correct. Whether he is going to be retained in the army or he would come out. Mm -hmm. Now, this would give him sleepless nights. What happens during these four years if he gets married or he has a ch children? Uh, he would suddenly, as a married person, become 
unemployed without a job yeah. there is no job assured to him now it is these elements coupled with a lack of clarity as to how an officer is going to judge that out of four agnivir in his platoon or mm. in company three are going to be selected right uh, one is going to be selected and three are going to be rejected what would you what would you prescribe should be the formula in that case i know that's a big question because the uh, you know the the intention of the agnivir scheme as it has been communicated Perhaps is to optimize create a leaner force a, a younger force etc i i think uh, this argument about a leaner force has got nothing to yeah. do with this hmm. perhaps it was clearly understood that the intention was to cut down the pension budget now in cutting down that pension budget this method yeah. which has been uh, resorted to pervex uh, does more harm hmm. than benefit this service right and uh, there have been other consequences like uh, i mentioned that the unit may be in field difficult field we heard of a case a few months back where a soldier was immediately sent to Saichen glacier yes, yes. and within couple of days uh, due to high altitude effect he died hmm. there hmm. have been other cases also now there is uh, no clear cut rules whether such soldiers would be treated and would be entitled to all the service benefits that were there in case he was a regular uh competent in the erstwhile scheme indeed indeed yes. okay uh, you know th because this is a this is an issue that's uh you know come up politically also and i imagine it's going to be a big conversation point uh, during this election also i want i want to come to the next topic i'd like your views on general uh, which is on the issue of kashmir the article yeah. 370 abrogation you know there are many attendant issues as far as afspa etc are concerned which yes. i'll come to later yes. but i wanted to get your view on the abrogation of article 370 and what has followed because it seems like indicators and data coming out from kashmir uh, uh suggest that uh, things are dramatically improved since the abrogation of article 370 tourism is flourishing there compared to how it was previously terrorism is down encounters are down you know these are all sort of quantifiable uh, indicators uh, your view on that because there are many Uh, you know connected legal issues as far as that is concerned yeah. as well uh in so far as these non legal issues are concerned yeah. whether uh, the tourism the graph has gone up there are more tourists and mm. uh, i won't uh, sort of comment on that right. for the lack of uh, credible data mm. uh, however in so far as discipline and law legal military law is concerned Uh, 370 abrogation has no direct connection okay nevertheless you mentioned about afspa hmm. now this uh, in light of uh, the judgments of uh, justice madan lokur when he was in the supreme court they are they create a very important challenging situation for the military yes. and also the political leadership now my difficulty as i see it is that the problems relating to special powers act have really not been thought of i'll tell you i'll just flag few issues yes for example uh, each law almost all laws give rule making powers to the competent government government concerned whether union or yeah, the state yeah. this is the only law which does not have rule making powers with the result there is a uh, lack of clarity mm, mm. Uh, specific intelligence or uh, the norms for the officers as to how would the warning be given before opening fire that's one thing right. because the Important. critics critics have said that it gives unbridled powers to the military to cause death use force even to the extent of causing death right in what language would this be given mm, mm. now i have been suggesting when i was in service is been now a couple of decades mm. that why can't a magistrate be asked a civil officer be asked to accompany any any military contingent going for cordon and search or right. operation if he comes fine if he doesn't come at least you have given an opportunity for the state government to send a civil officer right 
why can't the entire operation be videographed? Mm, mm. Why can't a confession have been given by a person who is suspected uh, and has been taken into custody be videographed? Right. Right. What would be the duration of warning? Mm. Now, all these are issues that have not been taken. And even when we had uh, the committee that was set up by yes. the Supreme Court, uh, by the central government under a judge, and where we had even Mr. Varghese as a member, uh, they have not uh, sort of um, applied their mind to such situation. So there is a time now that effective and credible steps be taken right. to show that the act is being humanized. Otherwise, it would create problems. Okay, so it's still an, it's still an unfolding uh, uh, debate that we're having, but those inputs are very, very uh, interesting the way you mentioned them, especially since you've done work uh, yes. in that area, especially General Kumar.